Martin, what are factorials? Factorials themselves are fairly easy to understand. How they use usually isn't. Um, so, uh, a factorial is a number which is then multiplied by all the smaller numbers below it. So, 3 factorial is just 3 times 2 times 1. 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. These numbers grow very large very quickly. So 3 factorial, and the way it's written is 3 with an exclamation mark after it. So 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. 10 factorial, which I've already said, I'm not going to say it again, but you know, 10 times 9 times 8 and so on, is over 3 million. It's 3,628,800 to be precise. Um, so factorials grow very quickly in terms of their size. Now, a simple example, uh, say you've got three people who have been nominated to receive a prize. So there's first prize, second prize, and third prize. How many ways are there of organizing those people for the prizes? Well, there's only six. So for the first prize, you could pick any one of the three people. For the second prize, well, you've already picked one person, so you're left with two. And then the last one, there's one way. So there's six ways to distribute the prizes among those three people. Now, factorials are used very heavily in probability theory. And probability theory is horribly difficult very unintuitive and people who study probability theory probably have a, a self-loathing or something because um, it's like torture learning probability theory but anyway I've got a few examples so permutations are when the order of arranging things is important so that example I gave uh, ordering the first, second and third prize. The order is important. So you could um, take a word, and the example I've got is uh, dog, and you could say, well, how many ways can you organise the letters in the word dog? Well, there's only D-O-N-G. So for the first letter, it could be D-O-R-G. For the second letter, it could be whatever's left, the two letters that are left. And the last one is, well, you don't have any choice anymore, you're left with one letter. So, <clears throat> the permutations of those three letters is three factorial, is three times two times one. So you've got DOG, ODG, OGD, GOD, um, GDO and DGO. If there's any more, well done, because there shouldn't be. And it's quite possible I've done it wrong anyway, but um, there are only six combinations of those three letters. Now, when you take a word that's longer, so binoculars, for example, there are 10 letters in that word. They're all different, and that's important. So for the first letter, let's say you've got all the letters spread out in front of you. For the first letter, you could pick any one of those 10 letters. Once you've picked that one, then you're left with nine letters. So there's nine letters for picking the second letter in your uh, permutation. And then you're left with eight, and then you're left with seven, and six, and five, and four, and three, down to one. So... The numbers of ways you can, or number of permutations of the letters in the word binoculars is 10 factorial. Remember, the number of permutations of any combination of things uh, is always the factorial 
of that number of things. So for um, binoculars, then it's the number I've already given, 10 factorial, because there are 10 letters. And it's 3,628,800 permutations. And don't sit down and try and do it. You'll be here in five years' time. Still doing it. Um, and that's all neat and dandy. This is permutations. I'll probably do a, um, a video on permutations at some point, although they're difficult. It's all difficult in probability theory. But I'll just finish by, well, there's two things I want to say, actually. Um, the word pool, for example, and you could say to yourself, oh, well, there are four letters. So that's four factorial, four times three times two times one, but actually it isn't because there are two letters that are the same. And so the way you work that out is it's four factorial divided by two factorial. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details on it. All I can tell you, uh, and that, that is 12. There's 12 combinations of uh, letters in pool. Uh, if you get a word like Mississippi, then you've got lots of repeating um, letters. And so it becomes more difficult. Although, if you know how to do it, it's not all that difficult. So anyway, um, factorials are used in, well, there's something called Stirling's, well, I'm going to talk about Anyway, in statistical mechanics, there are approximations to uh, factorials because they get so big. And, um, yeah, I'll be doing more on probability theory, the simple stuff. You know, I'm not going to go into, um, well, what, I don't know, Bayesian networks or something. It's just... You know, nobody's going to use that apart from some people that are uh, working in large banks and trying to find out what moves stock prices. Anyway, um, I am thinking of starting a, because a few people have asked, I'm thinking of starting a Patreon channel that will have free stuff on it. You know, you don't have to pay, but there'll be some paid for stuff as well. You know, maybe $2 or $5 a month or something like that. If you're interested in that, let me know, because I'm not going to do it unless people are interested. Um, I already have another Patreon channel, which consumes a lot of my time. It's more on philosophy. So, um, yeah, let me know. And, and just one thing, people say, oh, Martin's a genius, blah, blah, blah. I'm not. It's just that I'm, out, I'm old and I've done a lot of things. So in my business life, I needed to know about probability theory and information theory and game theory and, you know, a fair amount of mathematics and things like machine learning and so on, because that was my business. And I used to speak to literally hundreds of people in conferences about it. So I spent most of my life learning all this stuff. That's why I know about it. But I'm a very slow learner in actual fact. And in no way am I a genius. I'm, I've just had to do this stuff to earn a living.